What's going on guys? Magnolia Mo here and welcome back to my channel. As you are aware, I now have the Denon X3800H and one of the features that's found on the mid-tiered X series from, from Denon and the Moran Cinema series mid-tier and up is directional base, right? And that's a feature that is normally found in Trinov or Storm Audio or processors that are, or even the, the Marantz AV10, right? Processors that range from $7,000 all the way up to, you know, I don't know, 16, 24, and then so on and so forth, right? So if you just look at the Trinov compared to the Denon X3800, it's literally 10, 10 times more. So that's a, a feature that was previously reserved for high ultra high end processors right but it's found in the the Denon X3800 so I use the X3800 as a preamp only now and even though it has four subwoofer outputs I only have two subs I have uh, the SVS SB16 Ultra which is in the front and then I have the SB3000 from SVS in the back on the the back right side and I've been playing around with directional bass quite a bit and I'm gonna share with you all my findings and what it actually is doing you know from a processing standpoint and from an Odyssey standpoint in this video what is directional bass in order for directional bass to work properly it is recommended to have four subwoofers ideally in the corners right right left and then you know rear right and left in my case as I mentioned I have two of them front and rear so what directional bass does is it reroutes right it redirects bass below the crossover frequency from the nearest speakers to the subwoofer that's closest okay so from the nearest speaker to the subwoofer that's closest so if you have four subs you know in each corner and if there is bass that's being played from your right surround and from your back right surround right that bass would be redirected to the subwoofer that's closest to them and in essence give you full range speaker sound right all the while lfe will still be maintained and played throughout all four of the speakers so that in summary is what directional bass is and for the purposes of odyssey uh, i ran odyssey using the multi eq odyssey app and i have all the speakers crossed over at 80 hertz let's take a look at some frequency responses via the omnimic system to see what's truly going on with directional bass as compared to the standard sub EQ calibration from Odyssey. To the black curve right here, this is the Odyssey LFE output, right? Post Odyssey calibration. And this in the red is the Odyssey calibrated LFE response via the directional base um, option. So you can see there's a big null between 40 hertz to about 80 hertz. And that's not because of the crossover, because I'm crossing over at 80 hertz. So if anything, the dip should be ar around or in that crossover region uh, right about here, right? Uh, not here. So that then tells me when you use the directional base as the calibration option, the two subs, SB16 Ultra and SB3000, they are calibrated individually, right? The next step that happens in the standard sub EQ uh, Odyssey calibration is the combined output is what's calibrated, which is what you see in that black curve. That is not happening with directional base. Directional base will do the standard, you know, phase alignment and level matching and then calibration of each sub individually as opposed to calibrating the summed output of both of the the subs. So right here, this can be considered a deal breaker for some people. <laughs> and uh, for me, uh, I'll tell you, I'll give you my thoughts a little bit later on, but if you use the standard sub calibration, you're going to get a much smoother LFE response across, you know, both the subs versus when you go through and do the directional sub based calibration via Odyssey 
you're going to run into this issue, right? Because I have two different subs and they're one's in the front, one's in the back of the room. And this is what I typically see when I'm running them in pure direct. Okay. So the, how did I find this out? Let me clear this, right? So as I was going through and checking, you know, the frequency responses of my speakers, and this is what I found, right? So as I was going through this, I said, all right, so this all looks good, right? Um, and this is your subwoofer, like uh, from 80 hertz, that's the crossover. This is primarily the subs. Because the surrounds, you know, are closer to the SB3000, which is in the back of the room, is when I'm running the test tone, uh, for my left and the right surround, uh, it's actually utilizing that directional base and it's only um, using the SB3000 and it's rolling off at about 31 hertz. So let me show you when I switch to my preset 2, which has, which saves the, the standard uh, sub EQ calibration, right? Not directional, left and the right surround this is going to utilize the crossovers and both the subs look at that so the combined output uh, of left and right and then the the two subs is much more in line with what i'm used to hearing all the time so again like i said this could be a deal breaker for for folks because with the standard sub eq calibration you're gonna get a more balanced and more uniform output from both of the subs which is gonna you know which is gonna in turn lead to better subwoofer frequencies in the low range but when you use directional it's only gonna use that sub in the back and <laughs> this is what's happening so so that's basically in a nutshell what I found as the differences between directional and standard sub EQ calibration. So some people may like more standard, better uh, subwoofer output and better frequency response across all speakers, right? Or you can go that route. So you see how the surrounds just fall off and the fronts are still there down to 20 Hertz because that's using the SB16 Ultra uh, in the front of the room, okay? So it's not even bass. So this is just from us, from a frequency response standpoint, right? So what do I hear? That's two different things, right? What you hear and how the frequencies are behaving, in my opinion, um, you know, can be separated out, right? Like technically speaking, if I just look at this, I say, oh yeah, I'm gonna like this sound better than this sound, right? Not so fast. So I have two presets. Preset one is the directional base preset and preset two is the standard Odyssey calibration without directional base, right? So I can switch between the two easily. So I listened to, or I watched a few clips. Uh, again, the first one was the Nosferatu, which was very impressive. I'm telling you, like, just put the, the calibration thing aside. It does sound really good and it's noticeable, right? Because without the, the directional base, his voice, uh, you know, carries the weight uh, and is deeper, but it's not moving towards you, you know, as he's moving through the room. I must object, my lord. You will obey oh. this, my counsel. My, my lord. So there is this uh, person on AVS forum. It's Arch AEA. He, di he did a great job actually demoing a whole bunch of scenes from a variety of, mu of movies uh, to determine whether this is fake or is makes sense or not right uh, so i used some of his demo material the next uh, scene was from dark knight rises it's the bat right when um, the bat comes out of the alleyway in the beginning of the scene there's just loud you know lfe just goes through when the bat starts right so you'll hear that bass in the front of the room and as the bat flies over you that bass transitions to the back of the room and if you had multiple subs in the back this is going to be a much better experience i have one sub even with that i heard the transition right the direction of the bat flying over and then you know behind me with more intensity i should say uh, with directional base, right? The, the difference was with the regular sub-EQ uh, Odyssey setting, right? Preset 2 that I have. 
the bass is just evenly distributed throughout the scene. When you first hear the bat, there's a, a loud, you know, thunderous roar, right? That goes through the entire room. And then as it flies over, the bass is there, is through the room. But with directional bass, you actually hear the bass go from front to back. So that's a good scene to demo. Not much. But then as the... the oh, here we go. As the bat wing, you know, flew over, that's where I got the the SB3000 going berserk. Next up was the Incredible Hulk. It's the cannon scene. You have to kind of follow, right, what's happening on the screen. And I think that's basically the point of directional bases. It follows the action in front of you or behind you, right? So the cannons, when they first kick on, uh, the base is in the front. And then, uh, you know, as the scene is moving around, they're showing different angles, different perspectives. The Hulk being bombarded by the these cannons, uh, the sound or the audio is moving around, right? So when the cannon sound is in the back, that's when I'm hearing the, the the sub if the cannons cannons are in the front you know and on the front stage i'm hearing the bass in the front so i mean it's subtle but it's there and then the last scene that i watched was from master and commander it's the 18 pounders it's in the beginning of the the movie you know it's a it's a great demo scene regardless of directional base or not right because the pounding right of the 18 pounders right just the overall dynamics of the the scene is just great right so now with directional base it again it's a perspective right so if if you're hearing the cannons or the 18 pounders that go off in the back speakers that's where the bass is when they're in the front that's where the bass is it's directional in that sense versus the regular sub eq is just you know the bass is just all around you there is no directionality associated with it Now, again, I have to say this and I have to make this point, right? If it's LFE, it's hard to localize LFE because the waves are wider uh, and you can't localize where it's coming from. So this is only relevant when you don't have full range speakers. I go back to that point, right? If you don't have full range speakers and if you have bookshelves and you're and you're basically using your crossovers, the bass is just, you know, is gonna be going through your subs, right? So depending on where they're located or if you've done a great job calibrating your subs, it'll just be all around. There is no directionality associated with it. So if you had full range speakers, right? So I used to have those Martin Logan montages, right? As my rears uh, way back when, when I had the, the Martin Logan Theos in my system, right? So I had like four large speakers and, and the center, right? Um, so it's sort of like that, right? Where if you have large speakers that can play down to 40 hertz, right? Um, then you don't need to use directional bass in my opinion, but you can if you want to, but that same Hulk scene, right? I remember from way back then, it used to be heavy as far as the, the cannon sound is concerned, right? Uh, in when the sound would be on the sides or in the surrounds, right? And then when I switched over to these B&Ws or other bookshelf speakers. It wasn't the same. I would hear the bass, yes, through the, the subwoofers, but it just didn't have the same impact, right? So, so if you want the full range sound, right, in your surrounds, if you don't have full range speakers, I think directional make, bass makes sense because it fills up your rear sound stage with actual bass. In a way, it gives you full range sound. That's just my take on this. It's, like I said, it's subjective, right? So directional bass, at the end of the day, it depends, right? So you can call it a gimmick. You know, some folks may prefer to go without it. That's fine. Um, it's completely, you know, like I said, it's a choice. It's a subjective choice. This person on AVS, he didn't find it beneficial and he's got a very nice setup. He's got like, I believe, four subs. His take on it is, yes, it's there, but it's subtle. So for me, 
I find it more useful, especially in, in the scenes where you typically won't find the bass in your system if you're using bookshelf speakers, right? Because you're using the crossover to send the bass to all your subs as opposed to directionality. And that's a way to actually get full range type of sound from your system. Okay, so that's my take. And then for music, if you're listening to stereo music, right, two channel music, that bass is only coming from the front. If you have a rear speaker, that bass ain't going back there. So it's more in line and in phase with your front speakers, which makes sense to me. But if you're listening to multi-channel music, on the other hand, and uh, if you have a Dolby Atmos music disc, like the Pink Floyd, on the run, there is also bass and some sound effects going all around you where directional bass kind of made, you know, a difference to me, or it was just different, different listening, right? But you're not going to find that type of a mix in your normal Dolby Atmos music that you get on Tidal or on Apple Music, right? So I don't think you're going to find that big of a difference when it comes to to music for directional bass but it's it's more you know when it comes to movies and it's not in all movies like transformers there's so much going on right so much action you may not find it useful so i find it useful in the subtle scenes right in like the dialogue scenes like the bane's voice for instance or or orlock's voice or you know those cannons you know when the sound is shifting back and forth or so so it's it's in that in those types of scenes but not like in your true hardcore lfe uh signals that's not what directional bass is designed for all right, guys, so that's my take on it. I hope you found this video useful. As usual, please leave me some feedback, some comments. If you agree, disagree, you know, we can have a discussion about that. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.